I wanted to be able to demonstrate to the sponsor that the sponsors that these people have been eligible for a long time and they have not responded. <coughs> so they said to me that I need to you need to demonstrate that you've really tried to do outreach to them. So I sent out letters in June, July, August, September, and October. We open it up on Saturdays, one one Saturday a month for these people to come in and apply. Uh, we're going to do door hangers to everybody in the whole contour that has been invited but have not participated. We're going to put a door hanger on their door inviting them to come. I feel then that we have done everything that we can do outreach. It's a volunteer program. So if they don't want to respond, they don't really have to. So we have to demonstrate that we did our very best to reach them. So that's why we did what we have done. Uh, the response has been very small. In a way that's good for some that's been waiting um, because now what I can do is to demonstrate to them the people that was eligible, really eligible in the contour have not responded. So while we have this little window, two years, I would like to open this up to us. Uh, first of all, I have, I'm obligated to open these two up, finish off on 10, and finish off on 11, phase 11. That's going to bring in uh, quite a few homes that I know that they want to come in. Um, it's about 800 units out there that when I sent out a letter to them, 350 responded, yes, I'm still interested. So I know I'm going to get some homes in that group. After I do that, then I now have opened it up to everyone in the contour. When that's all done, and there's still some funding left, I can open up squared off lots in the block. That's the only way that I can do that, is that these homes have to first be offered the opportunity to come into the program. And I know that's an interest for a lot of people that have been waiting as in the squared off and in the block category. So that's where we are in how we're going through the system to get the people eligible to come into a block. Short of that, um, with money being what it is, I'm racing really hard and fast because FAA, as well as LAWA, has changed the guidelines. So effectively, um, starting September 2014, FAA wants us to do a whole different eligibility criteria. They're saying that even though you may be in my contour, I now want you, because that's, that's how they have a, this is a contour, and this is a contour. What so area is that? This is all of England. So if you see this, this black map, this black one here, okay, that represents, I, I, I want to come a little closer so everybody can kind of see. So you see this black contour here? That represents FAA. I hope I'm saying it right. No, that's Lawless. The red one is FAA. So if you're in here, you're FAA. Now some of this is overlapping. So if you're here and here, that's FAA and LAWA. But if you look up here, okay, this is not, this little strip in here, that's LAWA only. All of this in here, because this is not FAA, that's LAWA. Okay, great. So what I'm trying to do with this here, because after 2015, LAWA's not going to give us any money, and these homes, are no longer, they're going to change their map. So this is going to be shrinked down, and these homes in here will not be eligible. What streets are they? I doubt if I asked about streets. Can you give us any streets? Well, over in this district, it would be 84th Place, uh, yeah, 84th Place, 85th Street, uh, yeah, 85th Street and 84th Place. So 
So, so what I'm trying to do now is to open this area up. You can see this is brown. And the sun said I'm going to get ready to send out lips with brown and the blue that's up in that area. So they'll be getting some correspondence within maybe a couple months, maybe right before the holidays, to come in and participate in our program. A lot of them got interest letters that says, are you interested in the program? That's where I got the 200 and 300 homes that says, yes, we're interested. But they have not been invited to participate because I'm waiting on funding. So that's a dilemma that I face because I've got to um, work against the clock as well as the money. Ms. Griffin, what about the, the area over by the farm? Manchester Prairie. If it's white, they're not eligible. Why? If any of this is white in here, they're not eligible. Why? Well, they're not in the contour. Is there the plains goes over there? Absolutely, but remember, I did this disclaimer. This is their map. They sponsor it. They drew the map. We're only here to administer the program. That's a policy that we had nothing to do with. We didn't draw this map. Is there anything north of Manchester? Yeah, north of Manchester, 85th Street, 84th Place, 84th Street. Eighty-fourth Street oh. and Eighty-fourth Place. Are there any avenues in there, like Second Avenue? Or All the avenues or are here. So if you see any colored area here, this is like uh, Second Avenue, Third Avenue, Fourth, Fifth, Sixth, Seventh, Eighth. And then this is Crenshaw. Does it say one hundred block? Yes, this is 90th Street here, and this is Manchester here. So this group of homes in here are eligible. So you see this brown here and this blue here. Now I know this blue have not been invited. They haven't been invited. Some of the browns have, all of the blue have not. So how, do, how, do I, how do I know? How do I know if my block specifically is included? Just you can just ask me, and I can tell you. 89, 89. 89, 11, 89, 10. 89, 11, 89, 10. Second Second. I have a sheet. Thank you. <laughs> 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 oh, I just read that when I started with the third RSI. Sorry. RSI. Call me. I'll give you my card. Okay. Thank you. If you haven't signed in, please sign in. So, I, I, I mean, I... Yes. Does the 2015 date coincide with the aircraft noise reduction requirement? Is that why that the cutoff is the the cutoff is going to be that date, 2015? Well, actually, that date coincides with our uh, stipulated settlement that we had when the oh the contract. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what the the noise reduction deadline is? No, I'm sorry, I, I didn't bring that information, so I don't know. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, the city council meeting, I asked the mayor if uh, why Second Avenue from Arbor Biden to uh, Hardy and from um, Crenshaw to Van Ness, why we were not included in the contour. And he said because um, uh, FAA said that. Um, we weren't included because the machinery that they put in to measure the noise uh, didn't qualify. And those airplanes fly so low over our homes until we could read the numbers on the bottom of the wings. Uh, and he said, well, he had nothing to do with how the maps were drawn and the contours. And FAA said that if anything was changed in the contract that they did with Inglewood, uh, Inglewood would have to send all the money back. Well, I don't know about that, but I do know that FAA and Lava will not fund, if I was even to attempt to put a home that's not in the contour and get it done, they wouldn't pay for it because it's not in their contour. So they are, and when we move homes, 
All those plans go to both those entities for them to verify that it's in their contour before we can work further with that with that home. They will not pay for it, and the city of Inglewood can't fund it. I don't know what administration was uh, in charge at the time that they sold us out. The and it's crazy. Yeah. 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 Ye
No, I do what he's laughing about. You know he's talking about. Uh, so, <laughs> so, all I can say is, oh, I'm in the wrong let place. your feelings be known to um, your council person and let him take it up the, up the letter. That's all I can say because it can't, we're not the policy decision makers at that department. We're just the administrative program. We sent bamboozled a long time. That's right. We've been, so we've been, exactly. This is, of course, you, know, we, you got a lot of folks that are, you know, I don't care who comes in here who speaks on sound insulation, it's never going to be pleasant That's until right. somebody decides to do the proper thing. And these, these people are not doing the right thing. And everybody they send in here to calm us down, you know, people are getting older, you know, I mean, it's, you know, it's just not right. And I understand that. And I, believe me, I'm not here trying to even calm you down. But stay riled up and have set. Maybe that is oh, or something to help that make it happen. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying that I'm only here to give you a status on the homes that people are asking um, that are in the contour that I can give you a status on where you are or when you're going to get a service. Do you have a list uh, uh, with um I'm in 9122 Fifth Avenue. They put a little thing on the yard one time. And I don't know what happened. It gets but high. No, it's never been high. I never heard from them. Because when Harden was in there, he was going to do so much that he didn't do nothing. And all of them behind him have this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got, they had a big old giant meeting out here. Had 150,000 yeah. people in here. Couldn't even get in. Right. They, they don't care. Life the, was going to be great. Well, the top is getting what you can do is call the office here, and I can just at least tell you where you okay. are in the program, whether you're eligible or not eligible. Uh, if you are eligible, I know I'm in uh, that white spot. No, I'm not eligible. I'm there. 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 I'm
and saying anything about doing anything about What's your address? 8917 South Avenue. And your name? Williams. Henry Williams. Okay. Thank you. I'll but no one had come over. And at one time, I fly quite often. They say you will not fly over people's house after midnight. <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning, in the morning. I have a train come directly over my house and raise this motor at two o'clock in the morning. When I fly, when I first came here, they say, oh, we gonna fly high enough. Well, the woman says, she see right, I can see people in their seats. <laughs> I can look down when I go out and come in, cause I fly out quite often, and I can point out my house. Why is that? Now, Owen is going to build this new super jet, and they move the distance to the south of Century. Every time I look up, they keep moving the distance. Yes, you, 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 in this distance, you in that distance. Your, your, your street is, is fifth on the list. Your street is second on the list. Your street is ninth on this list. I'm supposed to be first because I'm handicapped and can't get around. And then I, I, no one has come to my house and say anything about doing anything to my house. And I have every letter that's been sent to my house. Okay. Let me say this. The purpose of these meetings, I bring people here that really aren't making policy. I bring people here that, just like myself, I can't change any laws in the city of Inglewood. That's, the, like you said, the guy who left, whoever said that. And you know who the rest of them are. That is not, that is above my pay grade. She's here to tell you guys what she can offer you. I, I, I see Mr. Fisher and I applaud him every time because he's at the city council and he's telling the people who make the decisions how he feels. This is not something that we can beat her up about. She's here to give you guys information for what she can offer. Just like I can only give you information to what I can offer. Now, there's a three-minute open mic to go and speak your piece. Mr. Fisher is very aware of that. He does it every time he gets. And good for him. Yes. Don't beat up on the little people. We're trying to help you, to give you information, whether it's new information that may help you. We don't know. But this is what these meeting, meetings are for, to tell you what's out there, what's new, and how we can help you. Okay, we have another speaker um, that we're going to go to. We were supposed to have Harry Frisbee from Public Works. There was a calendar mix-up. How that happened, I don't know, but there was a calendar mix-up, so I put him on for next month. Um, we are going to have next month, which our meeting is November the 20th. It's going to be on November the 20th. We're going to have the person from Crime Mapping who's going to basically teach us how to log on and find crime in our city. And then we're going to have Harry Frisbee. And he said he's going to bring pastries. So I'm going to hold that to him because <laughs> he wasn't here tonight. So, Officer, so, so we don't mean to beat up on her. But understand this. If she were waste management and they were supposed to be bringing us black barrels and they didn't get them, they'd be getting it tonight too. Because we want our black barrels to put the trash in. And if waste management came in and said, look, we had a delay on getting those black barrels out to you guys, but we're going to get them. They got to get it because we're the citizens. I understand, of what, I understand what you're saying. All I'm saying well, is. Management is not here the most. An example. Oh, man. gosh, that's an example. <laughs> all, I'm is, all I'm saying is go to the person who actually made the barrel plate. All I'm saying is go to the person who made the schedule or whoever was in charge 
or whoever made that policy that made those barrels late. Don't go to the little worker who just goes and delivers the, and he's going by what he was given. As, That's not his fault. I know. As manager, I say, listen, those barrels have been late for two months. When you go tell the people they're coming, they're going to be mad. Well, you're not talking to them. That's what I'm telling you. You're not talking to the, the policy person. I don't understand. Okay? We don't be mad at her. We I like know, her. but <laughs> let's... Uh, but let me say a quick word. Quickly, Mr. Burke. Real quickly, Mr. Burke. Yes. I've been to a couple of their meetings at the airport. They do not care about Inglewood, and your ex mayor sold us out over 15 or 20 years ago. So, why don't they, when they bring it, bring the truth, just bring the people from La La. And let them tell them your ex mayor put a lawsuit in against us. And we did not do what he wanted to be done. I was working in, what's the name of the other airport out there? Who is out there? <laughs> <laughs> Ontario, Long Beach, and no, no, Burbank. No, no, Burbank. 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 Okay. All right. From LaGuardia. They sued him and got everything they sued him for, but they waited and let Lala did everything they wanted to do to their airport. Mm -hmm. Your ex mayor don't stop them and sue them. They say, okay, we take the suit. And they stop installing wonders in it. I can't, I don't know if that's true or not. You, you don't have true. to take my what word I'm, for what it. What I'm saying is Go today, with the, he'll tell you. what I'm saying is today, right now, that has nothing to do with what's the I know, they beating us. The, you, when you get aggravated, you got to beat on somebody. <laughs> <laughs> the dog gets the dog. Direct, direct towards me. I got to do that next now. Am I right or wrong? That's what's yeah, right. right. They be like oh, That's why you buy a dog. Okay, that's all I need to say. Thank you. Thank you. The meat's over? No. Yes, it is. I have Charles Brack here. No, you don't. <laughs> And, and, he, don't mean <laughs> and he's just going to speak to you for a little while. We got about 15 minutes before um, this meeting ends. I thank you guys very, very much for coming. Once again, this is a meeting for information. And he is a commissioner regarding parking. parking. So any parking and traffic? So any <laughs> questions, concerns? Someone wanted to know how did you become a commissioner? Well, you can ask him. I don't know. It was announced in the paper. <laughs> I didn't know. I did not know I was uh, appointed. Folks called me at home today. Congratulations. They said it's in the Inglewood today. And where I live, there were no Inglewood today. So I had to run down to the M&M &M and get one of them. Charles, before you start, I want to start with you since you are the commission name. I didn't really realize that until they said this afternoon. I have said it in the council meeting, and I'm going to say it to you and to all of you, but that Fifth Avenue building here has been bought by a church. They say they're going to open up at Easter, you know. The lot that's vacant across the street is, is going to be AutoZone uh, built over there. I said in the council meetings, and I tried to get your councilmen to know that we in this city Number one, I would like for you them to go to those meetings sometimes and, and be there with me to hear those things. But it, it's my thought, in other communities, you know, uh, when they have something that's going to impact the residents, it's not going to impact me, but I live in this city, and anything that impacts any of us impacts me. And so when that Fifth Avenue theater turns into a church, all those streets, uh, and, and, and avenues uh, behind that Fifth Avenue are going to be impacted by parishioners. They have nothing wrong with the church, but just like other cities and other communities, they, they have ordinances where people who live in those communities can park there, but you know, if you're not a resident, you could not park there. And I'm charging him now with uh, the fact that he should uh, go to the commissioners and, and, and say that they should put uh, before uh, Easter, they should have all these streets, you know, marked off. There's no parking except for residential parking. We don't have to be impacted by something that people didn't put any thought in. And, you know, I, I wouldn't have known uh, even that 
except that I read in the uh, Inglewood Courier, you know, Mr. Fleming here, you know, he, he, he uh, prints that paper. But these people that, that represent us, they should have been talking to you about what's coming into the community before they just allowed it. They're going to tell you that, well, you should go over to those commission meetings and stuff. Well, you all don't. There's a commissioner here, and I'm charging you, Charles. Is with, that a done deal? With, Is that what he's saying? Or yes, are they, they already bought it. With, the with, pastor's with, uh, there almost every day, and they already this community it out. In this area, I, I didn't see it you know, coming for planning. Agree, you know, uh, that it's residential That's, parking. It's a and, done deal. I'm sorry for the church, you know, maybe they can park on, on the arena, but, but they should have, before they chose to buy that building for church. They didn't buy it. Go ahead. Yes, he did. I've talked to the pastor twice in person at the church. When? Lately? I talked, yeah, the last two weeks. He's been out there almost right. every day. Right. So if you walk over there, Mr. Bird, you'll probably find him I there. I will, and I'll do that. I'll ride. But they need parking. Yeah, that's what I'm I know, but I'm saying yep. they shouldn't be able to put something that, that uh, the script of the least on the mm -hmm. drum, and they ain't got no Well, I'm not getting that because that's, that's right. That's right. That's right. my story, my, 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 my concern. What? Yes, I've talked to him in person. I've talked to him three times. That's why I quoted him in the newspaper. I don't think it's coming before Well, I haven't done it. Like, like I said, if you go there, he's there almost every day. That's, they've already emptied out everything. We who live in the city, you know, need to know, and more than need to know, we need to use our voices. You know, th this this city will just be torn apart. You know, with with a, with a church on every other block or a liquor store like they used to have. So now, is there someone from the planning commission here? Okay. No, 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 I'm not. No, it's not parking. I don't think it's coming for planning yet. First of all, folks, okay. Mr. Fisher, I don't think it's coming for planning. Hang on, hang on. I don't mind taking the heat round. 35 years USA Inc. Okay. Yeah. I'm a master sergeant from Vietnam to Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. One purple heart. I can take the heat night. round, so no problem. You're out of the state Marine Corps. I won't hold that against you. I just want to do that one. But, uh, the thing Charles, is, Charles you know, Braggs. Charles Braggs. I'm Charles Braggs. 643 Manchester Drive. I do. I'm one of the kids pensioners that live yeah. in the city. Okay? In fact, my neighbor. Oh, never. <coughs> anyway. We know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What Mr. Fisher is saying should be directed, and I think it's Darius who's on the City Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. City, find out when the City Planning Commission meets. They meet on a Wednesday. What Wednesday? First, first Wednesday. They meet on the first Wednesday. My commission, we meet on the last Wednesday of every month. We have a meeting coming up on the 24th of this month. You're more than welcome to come. Where is it? At City Hall. We're in the City Hall building. We're there. So we start at 7 o'clock like every Wednesday. <laughs> If you want permit parking, you have to petition for it. it. All it takes is 10 signatures on a piece of paper saying we want permit parking. Now, the time frame, you have three different time frames. You have 8 to noon, uh, there's a noon to 3 or seven, uh, 4 to 7 parking. You pick out you know, those folks that are having that church over there, that's what you have to do. Bring it toward us. Bring it to me. There's a petition and a petition. I'll introduce it as an initiative to the commission. We'll run it up the ladder. It goes to our boss, Mr. Stadwell, in Public Works. And if he feels that he doesn't, he can't make the decision, then it goes to the city council. That's the flow chart on that. Okay. For permit parking. Speed bumps. And by the way, speed bumps cost two thousand dollars if you need them on your street. Okay, I'll just let you know way, way ahead of time. Two thousand dollars a piece. Okay. Who pays for those? Uh -huh. The city. Who pays for them? The city. That's what it costs. It costs two thousand dollars a piece. Okay. We do. Just like you can go to city council and request permit parking, and they will voice your concerns. Can you go to the traffic commission or the planning commission and voice your concerns? Yes, you yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The same procedures that you have, yes, sir. Um, we have a very good big group out at this meeting. And I want to tell you something. If you go out door right now, 
You do not see meters up there. And you know why? They had put the poles up, and they were going to put meters, meters up. And what happened? The city, we, the citizens said, no. we would do not want meters up there. That you do not have these people tell you what they're going to do and what not. You run the city, you paid the taxes. So you can have anything done what you want. Now they put the poles up here, and we went to down there and told them we did, we did not want to pay for parking on that street. Okay. If I and may, they, sir. They also took the poles down. <laughs> if I may, sir. Okay. Folks, from what I understand and from what I can gather, everybody is talking about what has happened there and then. This is here and now. Okay? Mr. Fisher, please. Okay, I understand. I already know when you get ready to go. So, I know okay. you do. Okay, I'll take your heat round. But the way that I look at it, okay, and several of them, the other colleagues that I talked to and other folks are talking to, this is a new day in the city. You have people who are reactive, you know, who are proactive. They're not reactive. Okay, Mr. Dotson, you know, you just left Councilman Dotson. You got Councilman Padilla. We're defining out things. They're just not coming in. This is the coming, they're taking over from the previous administrators. The mayor, this is his, what, his second year, he's coming in, he's cleaning up, he's just like the president, he's, he's inherited all these wrongs, and you're holding his feet to the fire. Granted, it's his, it's all happening on his watch, but you have to remember, this was done there and then, not here and now, he's trying to clean it up. This city, you won't recognize it in another 10 years within 10 years because it's going to be moving forward. We're not moving backwards. We're not standing still. And whatever I can do in my position as far as keeping the streets safe and making them safe for you, we have a study here right now. Just read, I got it from the University of Berkeley. Inglewood ranks number five out of 50 in pedestrian versus vehicle deaths. That's good. That's good? No, it's not good. That's bad, man. We're ranked number five. Okay. Oh, I was going the opposite. Yeah, we're going the opposite. Right. Product being unified, huh? But anyway. But you see what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen? Whatever I can do, and whatever the councilman can do, and all the other, we're going to make the city move forward. Whatever your parking problems are, I'm here. Yeah, are those are those deaths citywide or in any specific area? Pardon me, sir. Those deaths citywide or in any? That was for the city of Inglewood. I know, but is it in a specific area? No, citywide. citywide. Oh, so citywide. Okay. Mr. Brown. Yes, sir. I have a question. Uh, the last two days, uh, the last few days, actually, um, right there along Crenshaw, before you get to Century, they've been working on uh, the traffic lights, mm -hmm. and I've noticed that they that the traffic has backed up significantly, especially during rush hour. And I'm curious why there is there are no uh, parking enforcement officers out there to help mitigate the flow because we have a lot more on Crenshaw, obviously, but far fewer. I think it's 102nd right there coming off there so everybody's getting backed up plus with the the events that uh, that were mentioned earlier the shootings down there on 116th and near 108th of course that's uh, making it even worse well, in, res in a semi response if I may we're limited in traffic control officers as you know well know I mean, it's, it's limited that's something that should be addressed going to um, uh, Public Works, give the Public Works, Mr. Adwell will call Mr. Uh, I'll give you another call. Okay. Okay. For that. But if you see something like that, then let me know. Mm -hmm. You can call directly up to Public Works. Station. We have a traffic control problem. Mm -hmm. but that comes out of the, I if I'm mistaken, don't the traffic control people <coughs> call, call up on you? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, they, their traffic control were out there the last two days for the uh, uh, assisting the IPD and keeping the uh, streets closed off around the, yeah, the events. Yeah, everyday rush hour. Well, for the time being, yeah, because they had the poles down. Now they put them up, but they're flashing red. So you've got thousands of cars being stopped on Crenshaw um, 
as everybody goes, you know, stops at the red blinking light and then goes, and all the confusion that occurs, you know, you've got six lanes on either side, three opposing, and then of course 102nd Street with its two lane. Uh, give you the numbers to talk to and okay. It just seems like they would have planned for that knowing that during rush hour, the amount of traffic that, that Peter would be Prince backed up. Peter Principal. I'm sorry? Peter Principal. And just to add to that, the officers have the capabilities of actually and having the traffic control people stop the stoplight and make it a flashing red light, mm -hmm. especially when there's an event. Remember those, especially something like a homicide, that can last all day long. Right. We're talking about through a whole shift going into the next shift. So if you saw lights flashing, mm -hmm. it might even have nothing to do with the construction or whatever you're talking about. It could have had with officers said, you know, cut down the street, stop it, because we don't want every we don't want a green light at all. Mm -hmm. We want everybody to stop as if it was a stop sign, because we're going to divert traffic um, east or west, because we don't want it going north and south. Mm -hmm. So that could have been the case. I'm going to give you guys the number to traffic so you can, you know, call. It's 310 310-412-5207, 310-412. 5207. We have about five more minutes. Can we, do we have any more questions? You like that on the board? Oh, that was, I didn't see it. 412. I'll, I'll write it on the board. But like I said, ladies and gentlemen, the, tra the Parking and Traffic Commission, we meet the last Wednesday of every month. We're meeting the 24th of this month at 7 p.m. in City Hall, ninth floor in the, in the City Traffic Hall Chambers. You're more than welcome to come up and let us know. In fact, I encourage everyone from the first district because we want to be the most proactive one. Okay? So please come up and everything. Come to the meeting. Yes, ma'am. I get to ask the last question. This question is directed to you and Nicole. We had requested in my neighborhood on West Boulevard in Victoria, we had requested a radar traffic monitor, whatever you call that machine, a radar traffic monitor. Because you talking about to tell you what speed? Yeah, that speed, that's radar, speed radar. Yeah, that okay, speed I thing. I know what it is. And so the reason that they set it up there on West Boulevard and on Victoria is because they said that if we were requesting additional stop signs or speed bumps or anything else, because the residents are complaining that there's traffic speeding down West Boulevard during rush hour and down Victoria, and so when we made that request, they did bring out that radar traffic uh -huh. thing. And so it was there, and they moved it to several locations w within the neighborhood uh, over a three or four week period. So I was told that the police department, I saw them when they set up, so I know that the police department set it up. Mm -hmm. So what is the purpose of that equipment being there? Because we thought that after it was there, they would make a determination as to whether or not we were going to get additional stop signs or we were going to get speed bumps or there was no justification for either one. The police department, our traffic division, is the person who is, are the people who man it. Meaning we house it, we set it up, we secure it, and we take it back. We have traffic engineers that actually come out do a survey to make sure that this stop sign needs to be here or this light needs to be this particular second. The officers, the, the motor officers, they don't do that. So, so they have traffic engineers that actually, mm -hmm. so what do they do, just come out and sit there or how do they, how do they well, look I'm not a traffic engineer, I can't tell you exactly what no, they what do, I mean. but I'm thinking that what they do is they ask us to take, ask the traffic to take it out and post it wherever they want it, uh -huh. and then they took whatever data or whatever information that it had, and they'll make a decision on whether you guys need stop signs, you have enough stuff to stop So signs. it does keep data in that? Oh, yes. Okay, and that would be something that they decide. Yeah, okay. I honestly don't think that that's the police officer. We're ju we just man. We just put it out and yeah. make sure that it works yeah. and make sure. But I figured you would know something yeah. about it. That's why it was a dual I, question. I honestly don't. We're not the ones who make the decision. There's a stop sign because if something happens and because that stop sign isn't or is not there and someone gets hurt, they're going to say, "What training does the police have that you know gives them the right to say we have traffic engineers." They will decide so the curb what department, spent. they work for the traffic department or they? Well, that's public works. Yeah. They work public. for public works. Yeah, I'll come out of public works. Okay. Yeah. And a, another, a better person to ask that question to, uh, with, which is Mr. Atwell. He's the director of public works. We're going to try to get him here with um, Harry Frisbee next month.
that would be a good question. I wanted to make a comment just real quick. It's not a tech sure. video, but everybody that's here, and this is always missed, get, just go to the city website, get the email of the people that you're interested in contacting, contact them, tell them what you're looking for, what you want. There's instant accountability there. If the email's not read, you have Outlook, read, receive, click on those boxes, they'll out to teach you how to do that. Go to the library and they'll teach you. Make your request that way. Getting angry just gets your blood pressure up and gives you know what the future is. The gentleman said it's a new day and things are changing. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. I've never met you. And the bottom line is this. If you truly follow up on this, it's great to go to the city council meetings. I've been there. I've made a few comments. I've done it. Not as often as most folks do. However, it goes in one ear and out the other. And emails forever. I'll give you one quick example and I'll stop. I run a business on Century Boulevard. Some of the residents around there were concerned that there was going to be a new uh, marijuana clinic opening up at 4609 Century Boulevard. We sent out, everybody was concerned around me. I said nothing. I sent out an email to two specific people. I got a response right away from one, and the council person for the area didn't even respond until last night because he saw that I BCC'd somebody else. Yeah. And I did that on purpose. When the guy hit the pride to all, he was going to see his response. He responded to me right away, and, and something started to happen into where there's a vice investigation going on now in that particular place. So these things do happen. And you know what it is, is that you end up getting upset. Trust me, I'm upset, but never that gets you nowhere. Put it in writing. If you put it in writing, and then you can bring it up to these meetings without attacking anybody, you can just ask, sir, I asked you about this. You never replied to me. I'm a resident of your city. Then it's never personal. When you make it personal, you lose. I'm just letting you know. Because so you're just another that, that is another absolutely, he did not know that that's Stop. absolutely true. Stop. Just a prime example, um, I asked if you guys, at the last meeting, if you have any questions, comment, email me what your question is. I will direct it to the proper person and try to get you a answer. I got one question. Do you have a problem? Just <laughs> 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 one question. And so, and that one question has not been answered because public works manager did not show up. So now I have to go to our director and say, hey, I asked my people the same question. You told me your management would be here and they didn't show up. I need that per I need someone to call that person and give that constituent an answer soon, ASAP. So and I have and I have that easy. So he's absolutely right. Um, I do thank you guys for showing up. I appreciate it. Yes, sir.